Uh, the 0-1, and that's another good bunt. Checks the runner over the first double pump, and that's going to – nice play. Great base running by the Raiders. Now, Bayside will get the out, but Yana Sandy held, waited for the throw once the throw was made. So it's two balls and two strikes now. Yeah, we love, I love broadcasting at Cocoa, that wooden shack thing that overtopped the field looking down. Makes for an easy broadcast. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Indeed! She swung on and missed for strike three, and that will end the inning. The 3-2 is a shot. shot back up to the shortstop, and she won't get an opportunity, and Dalek will have her eighth hit of the year. No, I'm sorry. This is her eighth at bat of the Nice little bunt. There's tough play, and it's thrown away, and the Raiders will score their third run of the inning as Dalek will come around to score. And it's three to nothing. Rockley scored. Here. The second Raider run. Her last time up. Pitch. That one gets away, and this could be and will be the fourth Raider run. Nice play by Daphne Aravina. Great hustle, and the Raiders take a 4 to nothing lead on the high pitch. Holtz digs in, and Holtz rips it down the line into the corner. Both Raider runs will score, and Holtz is in the second base with a stand-up double, and it's 6-0 Rockledge. What a rip. Swung on and miss. Strikeout number five is out number two here. Keep throwing our third, and that one is going to be lined out to center field for an RBI single for Nelson. Strike three called, says Larry Torchia. Two outs. I thought so. Yeah, and there's a chopper to the third baseman. Checks the runner over to first, throws it away, and the eighth Raider run will score on the throwing air as the ball goes into the dugout, and the runner will go to second. That ball shot through the middle and off the center fielder. One run is in. Two runs are in. Three runs will score, and Kayla Kamau with a triple, well, a double and an error, as she'll drive in three. And this is everybody. Everybody will have batted. That ball lifted into right field for a base hit, and it'll fall, and the 12th Raider run will cross. This one's over. And here's the pitch, and that'll do it. And the Rockledge Raiders will win it. 13 to 3 on the 10 run rule. The Raiders. Hey everybody, Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network. And I'm here with our Kendall Size players of the game tonight. The 13 3 Rock Ledge win. I'm here with Brielle Nelson and Haley Smith. And let me start with you. Big night tonight at the plate. Solid. Sitting behind that plate tonight, hearing that ball come off of your bat. It was like, it, it just like stormed through your body. You go through a game like you did last week where you play nine innings, one run is scored in the entire game by both teams. What do you say to yourselves to get yourselves back in a mindset to know what you're capable of at that plate? How do you bounce back? Just don't think about the game from last week. Move on, have good momentum, and think positive. You know, you're a freshman. You're not supposed to be out here dealing up like you were dealing and dealing even like you were against Vieira last week the way that you came in. Talk about being a freshman and being out there in the circle. And do you feel any extra pressure? Um, being a freshman and usually going in on the mound every game, it's it's nerve-wracking, but it's fun to get that like thrill of just being competitive and making sure that I can help my team win. Now you shut down a team tonight that put 22 runs on Martin County last week. I mean, this team can hit the ball. Did you have a game plan going in? Did you know where you wanted to go? Or did you just want to say, I need to just throw my stuff? 
I just knew that I got my stuff and I got my stuff in the bag and I was just going to do how I do. Real. This team is as good a hitting team as there is in the county. And there's, a, of course, a great tradition here. Coach Scott is, is a fantastic hitting coach. He's a great coach. Talk about playing here at Rockleys and, and what it means to be a Raider, a part of this program, you know, and, and what the expectations are. Ever. What year are you? I'm a junior. Junior. So, so, you know, you know what the expectations are. Talk about that. So, as a Raider, everybody's expected to be a teammate, play your best always, and tonight we definitely did that. The expectations and goals. Look, this is a young team. You don't have a lot of seniors on it. Um, you know, where do you see this team? You know, I know everybody was th is thinking, you know, think state championship. But where would you, where do you, where do you believe this team? What do you think this team is capable of this year? I think we're capable of a lot. We are very young, but we are very good, and I see us going far. And I like that answer. I think that's a fantastic answer. Now, I love this under your eyes. Tell me about that. Um, I put that under my eyes because it shows that I'm, I know my God's got my back. And even when I'm going through a hard time, I just think about it. And I have a coin in my pocket too, actually. Yeah. And it just helps me remember to be strong. And he got me. He got you tonight. He got the entire Raider team tonight. 13 runs, six runs in that final inning tonight as the Raiders defeat the Bayside Bears, again, a very good hitting team. They 10-run they them tonight, 13-3. to three. Your winning pitcher is right here and your offensive player of the game. For Brielle Nelson and Haley Smith, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. For your Kendall Signs players of the game, Brevard Sports Network. Hey, everybody, Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network here with Scott Thomas. 65th career win for the Raiders tonight, by the way. Coach, congratulations on that. Man, you know what impresses me is this: how young this team is and how fundamentally sound they are. Talk about that. Well, it uh, goes way back to the fall. We, uh, we had a group of uh, four freshmen and a couple transfers that came in. And uh, way back from the fall, they, all, they were all in, came out, worked hard every day, started working together and getting to know each other because uh, being, being young and, and new to the team, they knew how important that was. We talked about it, and uh, it's paying off. Uh, just hard work. Well, Coach, I, I admire you because I know a lot of coaches in this county that have a freshman and a so that don't have a freshman and a sophomore combination in that circle. Very relaxed with them, very patient with them. Talk about that. I mean, you know, after having seniors out there in the circle, how do you make that transition? Yeah, communication yeah. Uh, from 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 early on, you know, and, and trying to take as much pressure off of them as possible. Uh, it helps a lot when when they know and we know that they've got a great defense behind them, a defense that's worked hard to make plays and that kind of thing. So when they can trust the defense, trust themselves, and, and kind of just believe in the fact that if they work hard, they're gonna good things are gonna happen. Uh, you know, and also too, the one thing that's important is they're both learning that they don't they don't have to strike everybody out. You know, um, we'll get ahead, and if we get a strike out, great. But if not, let's just keep it off the barrel, put it in play, and our, we'll make the play. So, and the girls have been do doing a good job of that. The other impressive part tonight is to watch everybody come in off of the bench tonight and hit the way they did in the sixth inning. And I see you smiling, but to know that you can go to that bench and do that, that, that that's got to be, again, take a little pressure off. It's nice. Yeah. It's tough as a coach. I was yeah. telling uh, I was telling Sarah, my assistant coach, uh, that uh, I talk about it a lot. Like, for, there's been a couple years lately where I've had my best nine and a tenth, and then after that we had some girls that were raw and kind of, you know, it was kind of a little easier lineup. This is a tough lineup. This 14 girls can play, yeah. and uh, trying to get them enough time and, and things like that's uh, going to be a challenge. But yeah, it's nice. They're ready to go, so getting them in there's a lot of fun, and, and when they do well, it's even more fun. So you know, this is a team that's going to be a lot of fun to watch from game to game because of their youth, and and even the leadership that they have in the juniors and the very limited seniors that they have, it's going to be a team that gets even better from game to game to game. We are here, still not yet in March, and this is a team that is just impressive to watch, and they get an impressive win tonight over the Bayside Bears. For head coach Scott Thomas, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network.